The Battle of Kihoi, also known as the Battle of Sinoya was a small military engagement fought near Sinoya between a small unit of Zimbabwe African National Liberation Army guerrillas and the Rhodesian Police Force on 28 April 1966. The skirmish is generally considered the opening engagement of the second Chimarenga. A team of seven Zanlakadas engaged with British South Africa police forces near the northern town of Sinoya. The seven guerrillas all eventually died in the battle, the police killing all seven. Chapter 1 Background In the lead up to Udi, the Rhodesian government took countrywide measures to prevent a general nationalist uprising. The general uprising, which the nationalist leaders hoped would follow Udi, failed to happen. However, Inflammatory broadcasts from Zambia, Tanzania and Egypt elicited some response and there were many incidents of arson, stonings, crop slashing and mutilation of, of livestock. Workers particularly in Bulawayo, protested by taking part in industrial action, and at wonky colliery sabotage attacks were carried out by a Zapu action group, whose leader was Mazui Gumbo. The conflict intensified after the unilateral declaration of independence from Britain on the 11th of November 1965. Sanctions were implemented by the British government after UDI, and member states of the United Nations endorsed the British embargo. The embargo meant the Rhodesians were hampered by a lack of modern equipment but used other means to receive vital war supplies, such as receiving oil, munitions, and arms via the government of apartheid era South Africa. War material was also obtained through elaborate international smuggling schemes, domestic production, and equipment captured from infiltrating enemy combatants. An earlier crossing by the guerrillas occurred early in April when another ZANU group of 14 split into three sections. One section of two men headed for the Fort Victoria area and another of five men, had orders to sabotage the Beria Umtali oil pipeline, and attack white farmers. All seven were arrested before they were able to complete their mission. The third section of seven men headed for the Midlands and it is possible that their purpose was to make contact with their president, Satole, who was under restriction at Sea Combola, near Guello. Chapter 2 Battle in March 1966 four small groups of Zanla guerrillas crossed the Zambezi near Kirindu, the first nationalist incursion following Udi. One group, comprising seven men from Gurave, Kurungwe and Markonde districts travelled to the chinhoi sinoya area, but their presence was detected by the British South Africa Police's PATU unit. Throughout the day of 28 April 1966 the two sides skirmished, and all seven Zandla men were eventually killed, but only after their ammunition ran out. The Kargas had initially planned but failed, to cut the Kariba power line from the Kariba Dam, which was supplying 70% of the country's electricity, and then subsequently the Kargas planned to attack the blacked-out town centre and police station at Sinoya. A notebook found on one of the bodies showed that the insurgent had been trained at Nanking Military College in the previous November and December. The presence of the Rhodesian helicopter which had been effectively used as a gunship during the attack was an important factor in the victory over the seven guerrillas. A ZANU spokesman abroad later claimed that the group had been responsible for killing 25 policemen and shooting down two helicopters, although the Rhodesian government disputed this, stating that the security forces had suffered no casualties. As a result of the inept handling of the situation by the BSAP, the government became convinced that the BSAP were policemen and not soldiers. A shift of emphasis resulted in 1966, and the Rhodesian security forces became the government's primary instrument for conducting counterinsurgency operations rather than the BSAP. The Sinoya incident also marked the official introduction of dedicated insurgent forces into Rhodesia. These insurgents were organized into small groups of 8 to 15 men operating from bases in Zambia. Throughout this early phase, the insurgents had two objectives, attack European-owned farms and destroy the oil and power line link between Rhodesia and the Portuguese colony of Mozambique. These initial attempts were completely unsuccessful. Although the battle was a Rhodesian victory, the event became a source of inspiration to the nationalists, 
Edgar Ticare wrote in his memoirs that when news of the battle reached nationalists detained in Salisbury Maximum Security Prison, they went wild with joy. Chapter 2 Section 1 Legacy The battle is celebrated in modern Zimbabwe as the first battle of the Second Chimarenga, its anniversary, also the anniversary of Nehanda Nayakasikana's execution, is marked as Chimarenga Day. The battle site was later developed into the Mashonaland West Provincial Heroes Acre and a site museum built by the National Museums and Monuments of Zimbabwe. The battle is commemorated in the Bundu Boys' song Viva Chinhoi, on the album Pomberi. <laughs>